Well, I'm back. That's right, it's the first film venture of 2014, finally getting these things underway. And of course, I've got no time to really talk about preview stuff. And today's movie is I, Frankenstein. A movie that is no way like Underworld. Nope, not at all. Not expecting a whole lot out of this film. It doesn't look like it's going to be anything but, you know, this action horror film thing. So, yeah. But we'll see. I guess it could be a surprise. We'll see. Maybe just something enjoyable. So, with that said, I'm going to get out of this car and check out I, Frankenstein. Very cold outside. All right, so I'm back from High Frankenstein, a movie that looks a lot like Underworld, from the producers of Underworld, obviously, and you know it shows. Um, and oddly enough, this is done by, uh, or it's based off a graphic novel by I don't know the last name. It's like Kevin Grievix. You know that big guy from uh, Underworld, the big werewolf, very deep voice. You can't miss him. Yeah, he wrote this. And he wrote the graphic novel. I thought that was interesting. Um, so yeah, what do I think about the movie? It was very underwhelming. Wow, <laughs> this movie was so, so underwhelming. And it, yeah, it was bad. <laughs> but the problem is, is that there are good things about the movie. There are things I liked. I think the movie had a cool concept. I think it really did. The whole idea of like the demons versus the gargoyles wasn't bad. I like the idea behind it. The problem is they don't really do much with it. I mean, they give you enough to explain the situation. They talk about all that, but they never really dive into anything. And I think a big issue is that while Frankenstein has a point of being in this movie and they explain what his purpose is and all this this you know ongoing war I think they really missed the mark on making that point interesting or making his story a little more compelling than this that like they could have easily had like something about his backstory that connects him to this to the fight between demons and gargoyles instead it's just you know they, they briefly do the story of uh, Frankenstein. Briefly. Which I think was another miss on this movie's part. They should have just made a scene, just gone with it, but they never did. But, yeah, they do that, and he just, you know, he just finds the gargoyles, and he finds the demons. Basically, that's all it is. And they explain enough to him, and they send him on his way, and then... You know, they, you know, he, he's like an ally to the gargoyles and stuff like that. Well, barely. They, they're on speaking terms for the most part. But then like five minutes later, they're not happy with him, so they take him back. But then again, it's like 200 years later, but it's five minutes when you're watching the film. And that's one of the biggest problems with this film. This film has no concept of pacing. No concept. I mean... For the most part, it, like, as soon as, like, they leave one sequence, you know, Frankenstein, like, he leaves, like, say he leaves the, uh, the cathedral where the, that's the main base of the gargoyles. It's like, he leaves there for, like, the first minute, and he realizes, like, where he has to go next, and then, boom, he's there. Not even a beat. There barely feels like he just, it barely feels like there's even a remote chance of, like, time has gone by. And did anything... You know, I think it's it's almost like like the, the the main base of the demons and the main base of the vampires they're like a couple blocks away from each other. So it's like that rival gang pretty much. It's like they got their side of the street and their other gang's got the other side of the street. That's what it basically feels like. Because they guess we that damn close. You know, I'm surprised they couldn't find each other. They were so close to you know one another. Oh, and there's that, but yeah, pacing, pacing is just terrible in this film. 
I mean, it takes no time to explain itself and really doesn't go into any details. It gives you all the details that you need and just goes with it. And before you know it, the movie's over and, you know, it's like, I think it's like 90 minutes. I, I couldn't tell. It went really quick. Um, but yeah. It's really a lot of missed potential with this film. I think that's the bad sad part. It's not like this is a movie that's like terrible and like in every form of the word, but it's a movie that could have been good and just fails. Um, you know the sad part is is that the cast is actually not that bad. I actually liked Aaron Eckhart, Eckhart sorry, as Frankenstein or Adam. Um, obviously not your normal interpretation of the character, but, you know, I'm okay with that. Um, actually, I wouldn't mind him acting a little more zombie-like and say, like, a backstory or a prologue. Of course, that never happens. But, you know, the transition between him actually speaking and, you know, being more human, may, I felt makes a little sense if they just explained it and they don't. But, you know, I didn't hate Aaron Eckhart. Eckhart at this, in this movie. I didn't hate Bill Nye in this film. I, I never can. I thought the cast was actually pretty good. I just wish there was a little bit more of them. I wish we got to know some of these characters. And it felt like the development, aside from Frankenstein, who's just pretty straightforward, everybody else was just sporadic. Most notably the gargoyles. The gargoyles were like, oh, you know, we, we trust Frankenstein, but we know we have our orders and blah, blah, blah. And like five minutes later, they're like, oh, we now have to imprison Frankenstein because we don't need him to, like, to reveal our secrets and whatnot. And then pretty soon after that, like eventually later, like, oh, we have to kill him to protect him. Or, or after they get talk, they finish talking with him, they say they'll protect him. And then they go off and say, oh, we're going to go kill him. So like now they're enemies and like, Obviously, it's understandable because they're just trying to protect the Order of the Gargoyles, make sure the secret doesn't get out and all that, and doing whatever it takes to get the mission taken care of. I get that. But I just wish the pacing was better, or just... There was some idea of development and tension between the likes of Frankenstein and the Gargoyles, but there isn't. And the, you know, the demons, they're just evil. Simple as that. Um, you know, Bill Nye does his best as he can. Oddly enough, there's some points where I felt he was very subtle, which is weird for him. Obviously, he brings his certain acting style to it, which is expected. If he wasn't doing it, I would be very sad. Um, the big guy from the big guy from Underworld, Kevin Gre Grievix. I, I apologize. I, I want to play screwing his name up, but he's so wasted in this film. At the end, it, I guess I'll spoil it for you. He dies. He dies. And you would think, oh, you know, being this big guy, you know, seeing him in Underworld, granted he's playing a different character, you'd think he'd, you know, do something. No, instead, he just dies in the first chance he transforms to his demon form. So wasted. Uh, um, I guess the other big supporting character is, uh, oh, how do you say her name? It's like Yovan Stravatsky? She's Australian. She's having a very Russian-sounding name. I think. I'm sure not. The, the girl from Chuck. I mean, she was okay. You know, she was a scientist character. and That's about it. So, yeah. Do I recommend I, Frankenstein? No, not really. I mean... If anything, I'm glad it doesn't feel like a complete underworld ripoff. It, it, there's something that was there that could have been different, a little compelling. Maybe it would have been the greatest film in the world, but it would have been enjoyable. But instead, we just have this very underwhelming film that goes nowhere, paced horribly, and is over before you know it, and... Also point out, I think every release of this is in 3D. I don't think there's a 2D version, which is upsetting because the 3D doesn't do anything. I mean, granted, I'm not a fan of having, you know, 3D flying in your face, but 
it's just a very lackluster effect in this film. So, yeah, I don't recommend seeing I, Frankenstein this weekend or ever in its, you know, theatrical release. You can see it, like, when it hits, you know, DVD front or on pay-per-view. Why not? Just be, if you're a little curious, but it's not worth it. So, yeah, there you go. That is I, Frankenstein. Um, let's go do it for Film Ventures this week. Next week, I pretty much I think is a freebie because I think there's only two releases. One's pretty limited. The other one is that awkward moment. I don't even know if that's getting a wide release, and I don't really care. I'm not going to go <laughs> bother watching the film. I think I'm going to try to find something else, either something I've missed or a film that I am looking for, and, you know, one that I missed technically that came out last year, but it didn't hit theaters around now. Um, but I need to be sure I can find it first. And then, if I can, I will go see it, and then we'll go, I will tell you about that. Or, you'll be here with me. Because we're going to have a film venture on it. So, that's all I've got. Once again, don't go see I, Frankenstein this weekend. Go watch something else.